This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 415 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're talking to Jillian Leslie from Blogger Genius, as well as Milo Tree, about how to grow your mailing list with freebies. This episode is going to be really important for you if you are trying to decide the right opt-in or freebie to be offering to your audience, as well as if you already have an opt-in and it's not quite going the way that you anticipated, you're going to definitely want to take a listen in. Now, before you do that, if you haven't already grabbed your Growing Your Email List guide from me, make sure that you hop over to your podcasting app and grab that. As always, I appreciate all for listening in. Let's dive in. Hi, Jillian. How are you? I am good. It is so good to see you. It is good to see you too. I'm so excited to have this conversation about how to grow your mailing list with freebies. Before we jump into that though, will you introduce yourself and your business to my audience who may not have heard you on past episodes that you and I have done together? Yes, absolutely. And I don't even know how many we have done. Like I've come on your show, you've come on my show. I should have gone back and counted. Anyway, hi everyone. I'm Jillian. I started my journey in 2009. My husband and I created our first blog called Catch My Party. You can go there and see it. It's still very much active and alive. We are the largest party idea site on the web. And then we built a tools for bloggers as bloggers, understanding the pain points. First thing we built was a pop-up app that many of you use to grow your social media followers. And this is called Milo Tree. Next, we rolled out something called Milo Tree Cart for bloggers and creators to sell unlimited digital products. And then we just launched something called Milo Tree Freebies. And by the way, these are all just under the umbrella of Milo Tree, but this enables you to offer unlimited freebies to grow your email list. I think we're going to talk a lot about that and the importance of that. And then also I have a podcast just like you, Jenny. I think we started around the same time many, many years ago called the Blogger Genius Podcast. And I interview people like Jenny, successful bloggers, successful creators, industry experts. And I also share what I am seeing, how people are having success making money. I love it. And I'm so excited that we're going to talk about freebies because I think it's something that a lot of people kind of struggle with. We have that old school view of your email list and assume that, oh, we're just going to create newsletters and we don't understand the purpose behind it. But we have seen, as we talked about briefly before we got on for this, that the algorithms have changed. And if you're not growing your list, you are absolutely missing out and most likely you're going to take a huge hit in your business. So I am really excited for this conversation. Let's start with, can you actually describe your overall strategy for using freebies to grow your mailing list for those that may not understand what we're talking about when we use the word freebie? Okay, well, first, can I take a step back and think about it this way? Chances are, if you're a blogger, online entrepreneur, you're in a niche. Let's start there. The more specific it is, the better. The more clear you can be on who you help, not just who you help, but the actual problems you solve, the better. And the way that I like to think about where your freebie fits in to where you make money from that first way you're connecting with people is what is the large, most important problem you are solving? And then how do we break this down? How does it start with social media, let's say, top of your funnel, move those people to your email list with a freebie. This is where your freebie comes in and then sell solutions to this problem. Now, people go, that's really abstract. Jillian, what do you mean problem? Here's what I'm going to say. Take your niche, take the people that you serve and see if that problem This is how you turn that problem from a nice to have to a must have. Can it fit into one of these six purchasing buckets? Can your solution make somebody money, save somebody money, save somebody time, 
move somebody toward happiness, move somebody away from pain, and or raise somebody's social status. I know that's like a lot. And we have like a freebie I offer that just like outlines these six purchasing buckets. But what this means is I'm a food blogger and you go, we like you say, I'm a food blogger, Jillian. I don't know how this fits in. And I go, well, and I just want to like sell an ebook of my recipes. And I go, well, you've got to think about it from the problem perspective. I know your recipes are good, but I have a million recipes out. Like, I, why choose yours? Because you've packaged it as a solution. These are 30-minute meals. These are healthy meals. These meals will help me lose weight, or this is how to deal with picky kids, or this is how to prep my meals beforehand. What is the problem that your solution can fit into? So this is how, again, you move from a nice to have to a must have. And this is where all your marketing shows up. And it's it's not hard when you start to kind of back into this starting problem first. So now talking about how does this whole thing work? What I'm sharing is actually pretty simple. When you think about, I solve one big problem. Now people say to me, but I solve a million problems. How how am I, well, maybe I need to do this for like um, five different areas where I, I, you know, my niche is not as simple as that. So I say, well, that's fine, but start with one. Start with one niche. Where are you getting the most traction? Let's say you're a lifestyle blogger and you blog about recipes and family and travel, parenting. Where do people come? What are people consuming from you? What are your top 10 blog posts? What are your, when you're posting, let's say on Instagram, where are you getting the most traction? And I'm going to say, start there. Can you ultimately create these funnels for all these different niches? Yes, but I recommend that like I you be known for at least one of those. Almost like you need to earn the right to expand beyond one niche. So what I'm trying to do is not limit you in your business. I'm weirdly trying to free you up. I'm trying to go just follow this paradigm and this is how you can build a business that all makes sense. Therefore, you pick your niche. I know you have five. Pick one. The most the most popular. And then on Instagram, just start focusing on that. On Pinterest in your pins or your blog posts, wherever you're putting yourself out there, be known, not as a like kind of like everything, like I serve everyone and no one, I serve this specific person. And then start putting that content out there. Start being very specific. Start talking to the pain points in your content to attract people to you. Next, here it goes. I talk about the problem and that I am the person to solve it. And then remember, I have this, let's say, big solution to this problem. And then I'm going to break it down. Start with a freebie. But it can't just be any sort of freebie that you think about. What it needs to do is solve a very small problem that is, I call it pokey, where you, I'm struggling, let's say, and um, I'm struggling again. My, I have a picky eater, right? My five-year-old daughter, super picky eater. I need to solve this because it's driving me and the rest of my family crazy. Okay, so start putting content on out about that. Hey, this is a family-friendly meal or blah, blah, blah. This is what I do. But now let's go to the freebie. First thing I'm going to say is go grab my download, my resource, and I'm going to give you three AI prompts. And all you're going to do is put these three AI prompts into chat GPT and you will, it will create a cheat sheet for you, which is my favorite kind of freebie. You asked me the question beforehand, like, what are the best freebies? I'm going to say start simple. Start, so you can get this just so you know, at mylowtree.com slash freebie prompts. Download it. Go see. You could have a cheat sheet in 10 minutes, the content. Um, And then you can create this 
and put this out there. But what the prompts do is create this sense of immediacy. It leans into these six purchasing buckets, this sense of like, oh my God, I have to get this because I have a problem and you're going to solve it for me in a tiny cheat sheet. I think about freebies as Hershey's Kisses. You give me a Hershey's Kiss, I'm going to eat it right away. This is not a 20-page ebook that sits in my downloads folder. This is something that is so snackable that I'm going to I'm going to open it. You've compelled me to open this and like it Hershey's Kiss. I don't know if this is true for you, but like I can't eat just one. I want another one. That is the emotion you want to capture with somebody who has downloaded your let's say cheat sheet and goes, "Oh my god, she's speaking my language." I need more solutions from her. But again, I've got this big problem, which is my kid is picky and will eat three foods. Okay, so how can you break this down then into a solvable problem for me? After I've got the freebie, you're right there now selling me the ebook that takes the cheat sheet to the next level. So you're selling me maybe some easy recipes. Maybe you're selling me some ways that my daughter can taste different flavors. Who knows? Maybe you're making easy meals that I can then customize for her versus my family. Whatever this is, this is where your, I call it your digital product ladder starts to grow. Now, I say this a lot. Are you going to buy your second home from your ebook sales? No, I'm going to be completely honest with you, but does this help? Will you make hopefully like hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars from it? Yes. However, what it does is it builds that no like, and trust. Jillian is the person who solves this problem for me. I will buy her next more expensive product and her next one and her next one. I will sign up for her membership. I will book a coaching call with her, whatever it is. But now when I'm thinking I've got a problem, I know Jillian is the person who will help me solve it. And if she can deliver, I will pay her for that solution. Yes. And I love the fact that you talked about expertise, right? Because this is what we are struggling with right now. Too many of us in the past as bloggers have created content trying to chase page views. So we create content based on keyword research. This involves DIYers, food bloggers, home decor, all of we, us have done it. And we are a montage and think, oh, we're niched, we're home decor, but we're not an expert in anything. We're just putting out a bunch of stuff that is going to bring in traffic without finding that problem that you have solved for that. So really going back and looking at it and saying, what sets me apart? What makes me the expert to be able to speak about this? Provide them with a framework that teaches them how to help their picky eater so that when you go to create that ebook, it's not just simply recipes. It's also a framework that teaches them step by step how to go about doing this and helping your child so that you could potentially create a course, do a membership, offer one-on-one coaching, do mastermind groups. There is a, like you said, you're not going to make thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars necessarily off of an ebook, but it gives you an option to become this expert that then can offer a multitude of digital products that you can hopefully be able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's really starting to think of ourselves more as that expert. And this is what Google is also pushing. Like this is, it's not just an algorithm switch up. This is people need to, there's so much content out there. They have to know who actually knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And I think by being that expert, it provides us that opportunity to do that. Now I want to say, can I interrupt for yes, just of one course, second? Go right ahead. Because I want to talk about expert. I know the people I talk to get very nervous when I say you need to be an expert. As if you like, oh my God, but I don't have a degree in interior design. And so I want to say, anoint yourself an expert. You do not know how much you know. 
And even though you think you're a poser, I then let me anoint you as an expert. I'm going to say fake it till you make it, but really because I am going to say, I promise you, you know so much that a beginner wants to learn from you. And in fact, I always use this example. I have a friend named Anina Bell, and she has a blog called The Chef's Wife. And what, what's so brilliant about what she does is she is married to a French chef. And I think, and, and this is so like, tell me if, if you relate to this, mm, learning from a French chef feels really intimidating how to cook French food. Learning from Anina Bell, who learns from her husband, all of a sudden makes it feel doable. She's I don't want to say dumbing it down, but she's translating what he can do to what I can do, especially if I'm not a very good chef. And that's what I want. So she becomes the expert, not like her husband, but the translator of what he does to me. And that's where you're an expert. You only need to be one to two steps ahead of the person you're trying to help. You know, they say this about children, like children learn the most from kids who might be a year older or two years older because it's doable, but like they can see themselves in that older kid rather than the grown up who's going to show them how to use scissors. So that's the idea. You're relatable. You've been in their struggle. Like Anita Bell understands my struggle more than her husband does. She can say, oh my God, I know this seems so intimidating. It's not. Let's break it down. That is what an expert is today. And just one last thing, with AI content now, content's cheap. Content, what's the difference for me? I have a problem. I go to Google. Google has their AI assistant right up there, answers my question. Why would I go to your blog? You know, it used to be that you'd have this nameless, faceless blog. It wouldn't be nameless, face, faceless, but it would to me. I'm just looking for an answer. I stumble upon your blog. I get my answer. I leave. How is that different than I get my AI answer? I leave. The difference now is you. Yes. And to me, it's, we become, when I say expert, I interchangeably mean you are an educator. You are Mm. educating people on how to do something. That is the difference. Because when you educate someone, it's not the same as AI spitting it out. You are teaching it to them at their level, differentiating based on what they're looking for, based on it whether it's home decor, their style, their interests, their colors, you're able to do that through your content. And the way in which you describe things is going to be very different than the way it's going to get spit out from Google when they go or they go to chat GPT or however they're using AI. You need to understand that when you educate someone, it's taking them on a journey to get that problem solved. And you're showing them ways in which they can do that. And I'm going to say the way you differentiate yourself even further from AI, have opinions. Mm-hmm. Be, be, I don't, I don't mean controversial, like crazy, politically controversial, but I mean, like, if you have a position about interior design, if you think that the pillows at Target are just as good as the pillows at Restoration Hardware, I want to hear that from you. I want to know, like, What are the shortcuts that you, what do you stand for? What do you believe about interior design? Maybe you think it's all about accessories. Maybe you think it's all about painting your walls because you then have an opinion. And and like you might say, the pillows at Target are just as good. And I might go, I totally disagree with you, right? Well, guess what? You're not my person. You're not. And then I'm going to find the person who is the right person for me. And so the way that I think about online business today is I don't need a million page views anymore. What I need is 1,000 true fans. I need people who get me, who who not get me because it's not about me as much as it's about I'm putting this out there. And if this is attractive to you and you go, hey, I really want Jillian to be my educator on this because I get her and I I see the world in a similar way. 
awesome because all I need is a thousand true fans. These are real people who will pay me a hundred dollars a year and I've made a hundred thousand dollars. So it changes the way we see our business. We used to, the goal was I write posts for Google, keyword research, stuff those keywords, even though you were told not to stuff keywords, you better believe if it told you to put a keyword in, you were going to find a way to put it in there. And now it's me connecting with you. Yes, 100%. Hey there, guys. My name is Melanie from Mostly Under Control, and I am a member of Jenny's Influencer Entrepreneurs Insiders membership. I've been a part of it since 2017, and over these six years, I've taken full advantage of the weekly trainings that Jenny offers and the monthly group coaching. The group coaching is probably my favorite part of the membership. Jenny has taught me so many things for my business. She helped me niche down and write and teach about what I wanted so that I wouldn't burn out. In addition to what she teaches, the networking I've done with other members has been invaluable. I recommend her membership to all of my online business owner friends because it is worth every single penny. So I think the big question that a lot of people will be asking is how do we actually ensure that our freebie has real value to our audience? You've mentioned that you love cheat sheets that that can be very beneficial. It's that Hershey kiss, which I love the analogy, although mine would be a dark chocolate with caramel and sea salt personally, but we'll <laughs> save that for another day. Um, but how do we ensure that that freebie actually provides the value that they're looking for? Well, here's the thing. You can't. You know what you can do? You can test it and you can see. And if it doesn't work, test another one. This is why, for example, with my load tree, what we did, like, by the way, go like, this is what I hear all the time. I use ConvertKit. Oh my God. Setting up my freebie was so hard. Setting up that pop-up, setting up whatever. So guess what? We said, how can we make this simple for people? We integrate with all major email services. We deliver your PDF directly to your new subscriber. We think of everything because you know what I'm going to say to you? I don't know if that freebie provides value for the right person. People come to me and say, Jillian, I'm always, I'm very, very honest as a person. And so somebody will say, I have a product idea. And I go, great, tell it to me. And they do. And if I really like it, I will say, wow, I think that's a great idea. And they go, oh, good. So you think it'll sell? And I say, oh, I have no idea if it will sell. The only way you know is by testing it. So therefore, I see the same thing about your freebie. You go, you download my prompts, you create this freebie, you feel so good about it, you put it out there and nobody opts in. Okay, take that as information. Maybe like be in Facebook groups in your niche and see what people are talking about. Maybe in your newsletter, ask people a question or on social media, try to get more information. But then I want, like if, if there's one piece of advice I want to tell everybody, if we could take things in stride, if we could create stuff faster to test so that we don't think we need to dot all our I's and cross all our T's before we launch stuff, if we didn't feel like our ego was on the line and we were being rejected at every front, we would be so much more successful. That's why I'm saying, go use my prompts, make another freebie, go put another like thing in there in terms of the problem you solved. see what it spits out. Go like we use AI to create opt-in pages. You'll have a completely optimized opt-in page that you can then share. Also, this is what I recommend. You've got information. Let's say you're a blogger. You know what your top five blog posts are. How can you take each blog post and add that special Hershey's kiss to each one that is personalized for that blog post so that when somebody comes to that blog post, instead of the generic, like get my cheat sheet that might be relevant or might not be, go make one for that page so that it is like a no brainer that if you, let's say, um, what a good example is you are a vegan food blogger and, oh no, let's say you're a gluten-free food blogger. Well, what do gluten-free people like have to do all the time? Make substitutions. So maybe you've got a substitution guide. So you've got some beautiful, uh, like, I don't know, 
a cake recipe and you go, hey, get my quick substitution guide because it makes sense on that blog post. And so therefore, it's a no-brainer for me to be serving up the right opt-in at the right time. Now, that might not work on a blog post you have about cleaning out your fridge. So this is where you can create custom freebies quickly to get somebody to opt in at that right moment. And it's funny, you asked the question of like, what are my favorite freebies? And I'm like, anything you can make quick and easy. So do you want to create a course? No. Do you want to create all these teaching lessons? No. What you want to do is maybe you might say, I'm going to do an email series where every day for three or five days, I'm going to give you tips to solve a certain problem. Awesome. But make sure you're writing those emails quickly. Make sure they don't have like individual videos that you've had to record. Just provide the value like a Hershey's Kiss and make them like leave them wanting more. So go faster than you want. Yes. I love that you talked about testing because I think part of the biggest issue that I find from clients is that they say they're testing something, but they've put it in one spot and they haven't changed the copy on it and they haven't thought about the pain points and they haven't made sure that they've actually talked about it more than once. But you talk about social media, put it into the content that's actually driving traffic. I just think that that's so important to make sure that you're really giving that freebie a chance to see if your audience is actually going to like it. I now, say this, oh, sorry. No, 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 I'm just ahead. gonna say, you know how like I go, okay, be controversial. Well, I say things that are controversial. And one of them I say over and over again is be salesy. And people go like, oh, because that's always like the word that people go, I, I want to sell, but like, here's how to sell and not be salesy. In today's world, first of all, if you believe in your solution, then go be salesy. Because people need your solution. And if you can make their lives better, you have almost like an obligation to put it out there because the person who is speaking that message over and over again, let's say, is being salesy, they need to rise above the noise. Think of how distracted you are all the time. So what do you do? Go say to people, if you are the person who has the picky eater, I can help you. And not only that, I'm going to give you a money back guarantee. So go buy it. Let me be salesy. Go get that sale. And guess what? If you hate it, I'll give you your money back. That's how you are salesy. That's how you say, you need this. I need, I know you need this. Now, ultimately I could be wrong, but at the end of the day, if I really believe in my solution, then I want you to shout it from the rooftops over and over again. Yes. So good. So now you have a free, the freebie prompts that you've kind of mentioned. Um, those are going to be able to walk us through being able to set up options for potential freebies. Is that correct? So all it is is three AI prompts to use, and you will it will spit you out ideas for your cheat sheet, and then it will create your you you pick which one you like the best, and then you say make this one, and boom, there's your cheat sheet. Perfect. And we're just right. now actually, we'll probably attach it to this, have a Canva template to go now, go make it. Right. Perfect. And that's it. And then use my load tree in order to put it, like just upload it to our, to our dashboard. And then it will automatically create AI. We use chat GPT with our prompts to create a landing page where somebody can add their name and their email address. You can add a photo if you want, but we'll write it for you. We integrate with all major email uh, email services, Flowdesk, ConvertKit, MailerLite, MailChimp, whatever your email service is, easily connect it. What that means is, as soon as somebody opts in, we send the freebie to them. You don't have to worry about that delivery. You don't have to upload it into ConvertKit or anything like that. You just easily add it to my lottery card and we deliver it. And that email and name and tag, whatever you want, we automatically send into your email service. It's simple. But then I'm going to say, don't have one freebie, have three, have five, have them be individual for individual pages on your site. Go make them. And don't okay. spend a ton of time 
on any of them. Until then you start to see, oh my God, this freebie is doing really well. People really like this. This gives me the information that I need to create an ebook. I need to create the next step for this. I need to dig in. In your business, you're looking for the traction. You're looking for people to tell you what they want from you. The mistake I see so many bloggers make is they think, I know what you want from me. Not because you told me, but just because I know, I know better. You don't know better. You think you do. You have a hypothesis. Chances are you're probably in the direction. You're probably more right than say, I would be looking at your business, but you won't know until people take out their credit card or, or give you their email address. Those are valuable things. And that's when you start to go ding, 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 ding. I'm onto something. Yes. So we are going to make sure to link to that in the show notes. It's mileagree.com forward slash freebie prompts, all one word. But it's, again, going to be linked to being able to, if you want to send a DM to me at Jenny underscore Melrose on Instagram, I will make sure to drop that for you. Just tell me freebie prompts and we'll make sure that you have that. Jillian, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and my audience. I appreciate you. Oh, it's always so fun to reconnect. And if anybody has any questions, please reach out to me. You can DM me on Instagram at MiloTree. You can email me at Jillian at MiloTree.com. Please, uh, Jenny's going to be on my podcast very soon. Uh, And it's the Blogger Genius Podcast. And like, I'm an open book. And I just really, like what gets me up in the morning is helping bloggers make money. Easily. I love it. All right. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. It's such a great episode. Always great to reconnect with Jillian Lansley and to have a conversation about the way that we see things having changed in the industry and where we are looking to go. If you haven't already gone and grabbed her freebie prompt, you're going to make sure that you grab that. It is in the show notes. Just hop over from your podcasting app to the blog post and everything is there for you. As always, if you haven't already left a rating and review, I would so appreciate it if you took the time to do so. In the reading, you can simply tell me your biggest takeaway from this episode. All right, y'all. Until next time, I will see you all then. Thank you.